I am currently an instructor and uh, graduate student at the U University of the Philippines Department of Linguistics. So my talk for this Binalot session is entitled Poro, a Visayan Community at the Crossroads. So for our attendees who may not be familiar with my research site, the municipality of Poro is in the Comotes Islands in the province of Cebu. Um, I'm going to... I'm mainly going to be reading my slides in English, but uh, minsan minsan switch ako to Tagalog or Filipino to elaborate on some of the points that I uh, that I will be sharing. So, uh, ang gusto kong i uh, ituon yung pansin dito sa presentation na to ay tungkol dun sa overarching theme ng poro bilang isang uh, community at the crossroads. And the, the two parts of my presentation will be referencing that theme. Part one, uh, I will be discussing the location of Poro within the Comotes Island group. I will also take up how, how one gets to Poro. Ano yung kailangan mong sakyan, di ba? Uh, ano yung tourism in the municipality. And I would also like to briefly discuss um, fishing fisheries in the central Visayas, especially in the Camotes Sea. Uh, uh, I would also like to discuss some case studies from smaller island uh, communities in other parts of the Visayas and how they could possibly compare to the situation in Poro. The second part will uh, be all about the Porohanan speech variety, which is my primary research interest. I'm going to reference some of the existing descriptions of Porohanon and supplement it to the data that I have recorded, as well as observations from my 2018 fieldwork there. Unfortunately, uh, that was, um, I haven't gone back since the pandemic. And I end with some acknowledgments and my references for this talk. So at the maritime crossroads in figure one, we see the Camotes Islands where it is situated in between the provinces of Cebu and Leyte. Major cities surrounding the area are the city of Danao, Cebu to the west, the cities of Cebu and Lapu-Lapu to the southwest, the city of Ormoc Leyte to the northeast, and the city of Baybay Leyte to the east. So nasa pagitan siya ng Cebu at Leyte. Ngayon, uh, merong four islands dito sa Camotes Island Network. Starting from the west, you have Pasihan Island where the municipality of San Francisco is located. To the north of it, meron, ta meron dyang maliit na isla. Ang tawag nila dyan sa isla na yan ay Tulang Diot. Uh, I hope you can see it on the, at the north northern part of Pasihan. It's a very small island. There is also a lake uh, inside Pasihan, which they call Danao. The central island of Camotes is Poro, and Jan yung municipality of Poro, occupying roughly the western two-thirds of the island. Meanwhile, the municipality of Tudela occupies the eastern third, yung kabila naman. And there is Ponson to the northeast, where the municipality of Pilar is located. So the municipality of Poro itself has 17 barangays indicated in this map. At makikita nyo rin dyan yung boundary sa pagitan ng munisipyo ng Poro at yung munisipyo ng Tudela. So how does one travel to Poro? Uh, in Barangay Eastern Poblacion, that is where Poro Port is located and it is the main docking location for boats from Cebu. Uh, there are direct trips. Uh, via ocean jet, via fast craft, daily, to and from Cebu unless the weather and tide do not permit. So when I was speaking to some, um, some other language consultants from, who speak Waray, from Baybay and from Leyte, parang notorious sa kanila yung Camotes Islands na, ah, di ba maalun dun tuwing, um, di ba malakas yung alun dun? Or may mga times na walang biyahe kasi malalakas yung alun. So yes, uh, it's quite known for that. Uh, pero noong pumunta ako doon, noong 2018, sa Kabutiang Palad, ay uh, naging smooth naman ang aking biyahe. So uh, another thing that I would like to note is that 
yung ocean jet na sinakyan ko nung una akong bumisita sa Poro nung 2018, the route was actually Cebu, Camotes to Ormoc. So, Camotes can actually just be a stopover while the rest of a boat's passengers could be bound for Ormoc. And uh, vice versa. So, uh, a note on tourism. From January to December 2017, there was a total of uh, 93,000 plus tourists in Poro. 66,327 were from other parts of Cebu, 9,041 from other provinces, and 18,334 were foreign nationals. Uh, you might have already heard about the Camotes Islands because of their beaches, because of their resorts. And uh, by the way, this is not a paid promotion, but uh, one of the beach resorts is Buho Rock Resort, uh, indicated in figure five. So uh, why am I uh, sharing th these statistics with you? Because uh, one could expect that Porohanons or the residents of Poro would regularly shift to speaking Cebuano to accommodate these visitors. And in fact, many original residents of Poro also work in Cebu. Bumabiyahe sila regularly from the island to Cebu uh, because that's where their jobs are. Uh, but I will elaborate more on this dynamic in this situation in the, uh, in the next uh, slides and sections. Tungkol naman sa pangingisda on fisheries, uh, as regard to commercial fishing, the Camote Sea is one of the major sources of fish in central Visayas. Ring nets and other pelagic-based fisheries ply the waters of the Camote Sea. And at the, uh, at the smaller level of municipal fishing, according to Green et al., uh, unlike commercial fishers, municipal ones generally exploit fishing grounds near their villages. So within the Camote Sea, kung nasaan yung Camotes Islands, uh, meron kang mga mangingisda mula sa northeastern Cebu. And from the other islands in Camotes. So what I want to highlight here and why I'm bringing this up is that um, the Camotes Sea is a highly interactive hub among people from quote-unquote mainland Cebu and Camotes. Bakit quote-unquote mainland Cebu? Kasi um, Cebu is technically an island pa rin naman. It's just a larger one compared to Poro and the Camotes Islands. Uh, babalikan ko yung point na yun tungkol sa notion of Cebu being the mainland later on and relative islandness. Okay. Um, comparisons to other smaller island Visayan communities. So, si um, Ma'am Zayas, no 1994, pinag-aralan niya yung pangayaw or sojourning fishermen at yung mga tumandok or the local residents in the Gigantes Islands sa northeast Iloilo naman ito. She observed that due to the mobility of Visayan Islanders, it is difficult to differentiate a sojourner from a resident since the former has settled temporarily and does not really know if the household will return to its original home or province. Dun sa Gigantes kasi, sa kanyang ethnographic uh, work, uh, naobserbahan ni Zayas na merong mga tumandok. Ang tawag nila dun sa locals or local residents ng gigantes ay mga tumandok. At yung mga alam nila na uh, pumunta lang doon tuwing fishing season or regular intervals of the year, pangayaw ang tawag nila doon. Uh, we can therefore safely say that in an island community, residence is never permanent and the population composition varies in respect to places of birth. Of birth. Sorry. Uh, pero dun sa mga interview ko, lumilitaw yung mga konsepto na lumad na porohanon or lumad na tagaporo, roughly translated as native porohanon. So uh, it is worth digging deeper into this um, phenomenon, in this notion, but there seems to be a very keen awareness among residents of Poro who among them were actually born there. Sino talaga yung... Um, pinanganak sa munisipyo ng Poro talaga. At kung sino yung mga pamilya na uh, taga Poro, lumad na Porohanon talaga. Uh, very, uh, very, a very keen awareness to this kind of um, 
being from the island itself. So another um, case study that we may um, that we may compare to Poro. And by the way, I I apologize. You might be hearing some chickens outside. Se malapit yung puesto ko sa main road at maraming manok sa labas. Pasensya na po. Uh, okay. So on Bantayan Island, naman uh, off the northern coast of Cebu. So this is from the um, the classic work, uh, the must read by Alcina, History of the Bisayan People in the Philippine Islands. Finally, it could have happened that the people from various larger or smaller islands passed over to others, as is an established fact among them. For instance, those from the island of Bantayan, which is near Cebu, are actually descendants of the people living on Samar Island and on the western side or opposite that of Ibabaw. Uh, of course, um, more comprehensive and uh, uh, more comprehensive and in-depth research on the genealogical records or the lineages of um, of the families and the residents of the municipality of Poro uh, will reveal a clearer picture of where they could have possibly come from, come from, or uh, how long they have been there. Um, isa pang gusto kong banggitin na yung Bantayan ay meron ding sariling speech variety na tinatawag nilang Bantayanon. Um, this is quoting from uh, Minda Carabio Sexon's dissertation on Bantayanon. The writer's interest in the Bantayanon language goes back to 1972 when she first heard Bantayanon playmates talk in the language. She really found it hard to understand them, yet her playmates understood her talking in the Iliganon variety of Cebuano. So this is very similar to uh, what, was, what has been written and what I have also observed in 2018 to how Porohanons would regularly accommodate Cebuano-speaking people by switching to the lingua franca. So a lingua franca is a language of wider communication in a certain region. So, uh, palaging nag adjust at kayang, kayang-kayang mag-adjust ng mga porohanon kapag meron silang kausap na gumagamit ng Cebuano. But uh, some of my consultants, some of the people that I, have that I have spoken to mentioned that kapag vice versa, kapag ang Cebuano ay sumusubok intindihin yung porohanon or kapag ang Cebuano ay sumusubok magsalita ng porohanon, hindi ganun kadali. Hindi lahat. Okay? Uh, so now uh, that serves as my seg to the linguistic portion of my talk at the linguistic crossroads. So let's now turn to the situation in the municipality of Poro and the features of Porohanon as a speech variety. So according to the Philippine Atlas, there, there were 25,212 um, residents of Poro as of 2015. While the municipality is undeniably the core community and origin of Porohano native speakers, at least today, there may still be individuals and families residing in the other islands who speak it within a context of a Cebuano majority. So baka meron pa rin mga pamilya, meron pa rin mga barangay sa ibang mga isla ng Kamotes na nakakapagsalita at gumagamit talaga ng Porohano. So in figure six, uh, this is Professor John Wolf's sketch of the distribution of Porohanon speakers. But this was in 1967. Uh, in 1967, he indicated that there are still areas in the municipality of Tudela next to Poro, yung katabing munisipyo ng Poro. And in other islands such as Pasihan and Ponson, there are still communities there which speak Porohanon. So I'm sure the situation must have changed in the last um, 50 or so years. So uh, one of the further directions for my research really is that there is a need for a more comprehensive and up-to-date survey of the islands to ascertain the current distribution and residence of Porohano native speakers. Interestingly, according to Ma'am Joy Tawil, um, some of the residents of Barangay San Isidro in the municipality of San Francisco in Pasihan, yung nakita nating isla sa kaliwa, uh, 
they have been found to also speak for Rohanon. These residents, members of the Estrera clan, yung angkan na may apelido na Estrera, sabi nila ay galing daw talaga ng Poro at nag-migrate lang sila papunta sa Pasihan. So meron pa ba sa ibang mga lugar na nagsasalita pa rin ng Orohanon? Yun ang gusto kong uh, malaman sana. Okay, uh, currently Orohanon is rated as 6B doon sa tinatawag na uh, Expanded Graded Intergenerational Disruption Scale. Kapag ang wika ay isang 6B na wika, vigorous ang uh, status niya. Uh, generally, it is used at home and in casual conversations by all generations. Uh, kahit yung mga nakausap ko na porohanon, kahit na nagtatrabaho sila sa Maynila, um, pero kapag nandun sila sa boarding house o dun sa inuupahan nila na um, kasama nila yung mga kaibigan nila na galing isla at uh, yung mga kamag-anak nila, porohanon pa rin yung salita nila. Uh, however, when... Porohanons are in more formal settings such as in church, kapag nagbimisa, in letters, in written correspondence, or when they are asked to speak on stage in formal events, you will expect that they will switch to Cebuano, to the more uh, dominant lingua franca. Uh, many Porohanons are also conversant in Tagalog-based Filipino, mainly through TV, uh, national mass media. And of course, it is also being taught as a subject in school. So may gusto lang akong i-share ng mga screenshot at uh, mga examples kung bakit uh, mukhang warranted ang 6B na assessment ng uh, Porohanon. So there is a Porohanon newsletter maintained by the LGU of Poro. Articles are written mostly in Porohanon. But of course, there are some contributions still written in Cebuano. So, paano ko nalalaman na porohanon yung uh, ginamit sa isang article? Mamaya, papag-usapan ko kasi kung ano yung features noong speech variety mismo at kung paano siya naiiba sa Cebuano. Sa social media rin, madalas silang gumamit ng porohanon sa social media. Uh, mag-2,000 members na ang um, porohanon Facebook group. At uh, gusto kong pasalamatan yung nag-moderate uh, dito sa group na ito mamaya sa aking acknowledgements. Uh, makikita mo na gumagamit talaga sila sa kanila comments, sa kanila mga post noong Porohanon na salita mismo. Meron ding proudly Porohanon Facebook page. Uh, nasa 2,335 na ang nakalike dito. Um, kapag may events sa Poro, kapag may mga um, mga um, happenings of nation of uh, local interest uh, nakapost diyan ina-update nila diyan okay so ginagamit siya sa social media sa Facebook okay um ito uh, kakalabas lang nitong article na to ni na Nash uh, and company nung 2020 uh, they are exploring the notion of island languages we postulate the admittedly intuitive and problematic notion that an island community is a community uh, whose members are aware that they live on an island without the help of external maps. And we believe languages and cultures born and existing in such conditions warrant the use of the term relative insularity. Oh, so this is a very um, interesting and important for my research. Some islands are smaller more islandy, quote-unquote, and island-like than others. Kasi nga naman, um, kung ikukumpara mo yung Poro sa Cebu, mas malaki pa rin talaga yung Cebu, kahit na pareho naman silang isla. Cebu is technically still an island, but Poro, as a community, seems to display higher relative insularity. And they are very much aware of this. Uh, ma matingkad dun sa kamalayan nila, na ang komunidad nila ay isang island community. Sabi nung isang mga consultant sa akin, at sana nga talaga makabalik na ako sa Poro. Sige sir, PM lang niya kuhon pag nabalik kag isla. So sure sir, just send me a personal message when hopefully you go back to the island. They refer to Poro as the island, ang isla. Um, also, more of... Um, to add to that, a minimal and partial definition of an island language 
from this emic perspective would be to say that island languages are languages with a word for island, which inhabitants use in order to identify themselves. So according to uh, Mr. Edwin Marquez, um, who moderates the Porohanon Facebook group, an alternative label to Porohanon as a speech variety is also Tinagaporo. Uh, so this is a common uh, Bisayan language, Bisayan variety strategy. Nalalagyan mo ng infix na in. Uh, inakyanon or kinaraya, di ba? Merong may in lahat yung mga pangalan ng speech variety niya. So ang isa pa raw tawag sa Porohanon ay Tinagaporo. Literally of one from Poro. Ah, um, nagsasalita siya ng Tinagaporo. Okay, so uh, one remaining question mark or one uh, question for me is that uh, what is the history of Poro as a place name? Bakit siya pinangala ng Poro? Kasi uh, perhaps the most probable candidate would be Waray uh, to the east which has the word Puro and that is their word for island. Pero ang nakakapagtaka sa akin why does the word puro reflect the consonant R, which is the waray reflex or the waray manifestation, rather than an L, as in Cebuano, pulo, or kapag Cebuano mainland, quote-unquote, na ah, nawawala yung L, po na lang. So bakit ganun? Bakit R yung nandun sa pangalan noong munisipyo? So this is, uh, this is hinting at what I'm going to discuss in the next slides. Because Porohanon is often described as a mixture of other Visayan varieties like Waray, Hiligaynon, Cebuano, and Bulanon. At pati raw mas bateño, may, may similarity sa Porohanon. According to Wolf, si Wolf yung unang nagsulat, nagpublish ng pag-aaral tungkol sa Porohanon. Or the Camotes dialect. He calls it the Camotes dialect. Wolf 1967 considers it now a dialect of Cebuano due to the influx of borrowings. So napaka dami na talaga ng influence ng Cebuano sa structure, sa lexicon, sa words ng um, Porohanon. But he acknowledges the possibility of an underlying non-Cebuano substrate, possibly a Samar Leyte Hiligay non Camotes type of Bisayan which may be the source of Porohanon's distinctive features. Kasi sinasabi ni Wolf, yung mga bahagi ng istruktura ng Porohanon na nagpapaiba sa kanya sa Cebuano ay hindi madaling mahiram or hindi madaling uh, makuha dahil lamang sa contact, contact situations. So ang sinasabi ni Wolf, baka yung dating speech variety na nandun sa Camotes Islands ay hindi Cebuano at sakalang siyang napatungan, quote-unquote, napatungan ng items and structural features from Cebuano. So, according to Lobel, it is also interesting that the dialects of the oldest settlements in Baybay Leyte uh, and the Camotes Islands show a warayan substratum. Kapag sinabing substratum, yan, baka ginagamit din sa archaeology uh, na Meron siyang baka yung dating kapamilya or yung dating um, kamag-anak ng Porohanon ay ultimately baka bumabalik na doon sa mga warayan varieties in Samar and Leyte. At lumiit na lang ng bahagya yung sakop ng mga nagsasalita ng waray. Okay? Uh, gusto ko magpakita ng data para makita, marinig ninyo kung ano ba talagang itsura nitong Porohanon. So, tuwang-tuwa ako dito nung una kong nadiscover ito at uh, sa tingin ko, um, isa ito sa naghatak sa akin kung bakit ko gusto mag-research uh, mag tungkol sa, sa wikang ito. Porohanon features a pre-vocalic Z. Kapag sinabing pre-vocalic, uh, nangyayari siya before vowels. So, ang makikita nyo kapag halimbawa sa Cebuano, kapag ang tawag nila ay hayop or animal, sa Porohanon, ang salita nila ay hazop. Z ang ginagamit nila. So, kung sa Cebuano ay tian, 
tizan sa porohanon. Kuyup, kuzup, uh, ang salita nila para sa baby or bata ay puya, pero sa porohanon ay puza. At um, pardon my French for the Cebuano speakers here in the conference, pero kung yung tawag nila sa demonyo, sa jablo sa Cebuano ay yawa, sa porohanon, ang salita nila ay zawa. So very... Um, very interesting and widespread itong pre-vocalic Z, which, uh, according to Zork and the others, originated from um, Visayan Y, or the, the glide consonant. So, you might be familiar with the other Visayan varieties such as Utod Nun, such as Bolanon and Surigao Nun, na iba yung reflex nila, iba yung manifestation nila ng tunog na in business Z, J or J, the J sound yung um, ginagamit nila. Halimbawa, maadyong buntag, uh, ladyo kaadyo, uh, ngadyan, etc. So, may parallel processes in the phonology sa ibang mga bahagi, sa ibang areas ng Visayan uh, languages. Another uh, phonological feature that it shares with Cebuano, um, kung kayo ay galing sa Cebu City, kung kayo ay nasa urban centers ng mga ng Visayan speaking regions, uh, maoobserbahan nyo yung tinatawag na lateral syncope or nawawala yung L word sa loob ng L sound sa loob ng mga salita. So uh, sa Purohanon, ang salita nila for house ay by. Uh, Ang salita nila para sa dalaga ay daga. Tulog becomes tog. Sulo becomes so. Um, Etc. So, it is something that is share, it shares with Cebuano. Pati yung common noun markers, uh, Wolf has already pointed this out in the 1960s, mas kamukha niya yung mga makikita natin sa waray varieties. And to a certain extent, mas batenyo and hiligay nun. So yung uh, in a phrase, for example, anpuza, ang bata, the child, ang gagamitin nila ay an, imbis na ang. Uh, meron din silang distinction between sin and san, at, uh, pero gumagamit din sila ng marker na sa, or locations, or other obliques kung tawagin. Uh, makikita din natin na Yung personal pronouns ng porohanon ay kamukha din nung mga nasa waray. Uh, kapansin-pansin yung porohanon, uh, they tend to preserve the final N. So, imbis na nako or nato, ang pronoun na ginagamit nila ay nakon or naton. Yung mga pronoun na may Y, of course, naging Z, Siza, uh, Niza, Ninzu, uh, sa inzo, etc. So, um, the affirmative existential marker, punta naman tayo sa morphology or word structure. The affirmative existential marker or how they express the meaning there is, meron, uh, mukhang may parallels siya sa waray adi or ada. Iligay nun may ara or mas batenyo ada. Ang surigaw nun araman. Kasi ang gamit nila sa porohanon ay ara. Ara sa bay ang daga. The young woman is in the house. Kasi kung Cebuano or galing sa quote-unquote mainland Cebu, malamang ang gagawin, ang gagamitin ay aduna or naa. Aduna, uh, pasensya na po, baka mali ito ah. Aduna or naa sa balay ang dalaga or naa sa bay ang daga. Pero sa porohanon, ara nga. And uh, for finally, for with regard to the uh, linguistic features, yung affirmative marker at uh, makita to sa napakaraming mga Bisayan languages and other Central Philippine languages in fact. Yung gayud kung, uh, kung sabihin ng mga nagsasalita ng Bisayan languages. Sa Porohanon, ang form ng affirmative marker nila ay gazud. Or minsan, ang sasabihin na lang nila ay ga. Uh, they're just going to clip it. Puputulin na lang nila. So sa figure 7, gusto kong ibahagi ito. Uh, this is just an informal map 
of the distribution of the affirmative marker in Visayan languages. Sorry. Ah, ingay ng mga manok. Um, gusto ko lang sabihin na informal kasi bunga lang ito ng chikahan namin no mga uh, quote-unquote authors dyan na nakasite kasi may nakita kaming isang map na hinati yung Visayan region into good, uh, good and uh, good. So, tama naman siya, pero parang hindi kumpleto. So, sabi, na, sabi namin, uh, based on our data sets, based on what we have, ano pa kaya yung mga variations na makikita sa iba pang mga Visayan community? So, may Gazud sa Porohanon, may Gajud, of course, may Gador sa Asi, sa Rumblumanon, ah, sorry, sa, sa Rumblon. And maybe sa barangay level, meron tayong makikita ang mga variations. So, informal lang siya. Bunga lang talaga siya ng chikahan. May mga nag-share kasi na medyo nagalit yata. Nasuko sila. <laughs> nga, nga naman wala sa amu. Ah. Bakit daw wala yung variation nila? So, ito ay ano lang, pubmat lamang sa Facebook na napagkatuwaan namin gawin. Anyway, uh, I would like to thank um several people for making this um study possible and for assisting me dito sa research kong ito si Mr. Edwin Marquez at si Mr. Alvin J. Donaire of the Porohanon Facebook group kay Mr. Joseph Andriano sa uh, LGU Poro lalo na kina Ma'am Joy Tawil and Mr. Abel Garciano kay Attorney Lordito Borlasa kay Ms. Lizelle Mansing and kay Mr. Virgilio Andriano. Salamat ka, Azo. So these are my references. And there. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. That was a really, really interesting talk. Uh, so yeah, now we're going to open up the floor to questions. So if anyone has any questions they would like to ask, uh, feel free to open your camera uh, and ask the question and your mic as well. Uh, raise your hand or type it in the chat and uh, we could read it uh, for you if you are uh, shy. <laughs> um, I think there's a question from... Uh, from... Dr. Mike Herrera. Uh, I'll read it out loud na lang. Uh, Has a linguistic phylogenetic tree been est estimated that includes Poro along with other Philippine language languages? If so, where does it sit in the tree? And is it basal? So uh, Dr. Mike Herrera is doing DNA studies. And also he appended. When you go back and you also give him some chicken feathers. Yun. <laughs> Hi. Um, hindi pa siya phylogenetic. Hindi pa phylogenetic yung approach. Uh, more on traditional comparative method pa. Uh, so this was, ano pa to? Uh, mano mano dun sa 1977 uh, study ni Zork, uh, David Zork, the Visayan dialects of the Philippines. Um, ang affinity niya, ang affinity ng Porohanon ay doon sa tinatawag niyang Central Visayan Branch. So, within the Central Visayan Branch, ang mga kamag-anak niya, of course, ay uh, the Warayan Varieties, um, Cebuano, uh, at yung mga iba pang nandun sa Central Visayas. Pero, ano, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, our department project, yung phylogeny project, um, requested some data from me uh, para sa Porohanon. So, it um, uh, kaabang-abang kung ano yung lalabas na resulta kapag uh, ipinasok na sa phylogenetic um, methods yung datos galing sa Porohanon. But according to the traditional comparative method, um, according to more... Uh, sa old school na ginagamit, nandun siya sa tinatawag na Central Visayan uh, languages. And, and from that, uh, 
pwede ba siyang ma ano ma trace kung kailan pa siya ano kung gaano katagal na nag-exist or at least kung gaan, saan siya nag nag influence or see which one you may hire influence kasi you mentioned na what are you may influence iba and tama kay yeah. ang, ang joke doon sa Cebu ay YL lagi eh. oh. <laughs> tama yeah. ba oh, oh ngay eh. um aniyan may love hate relationship kaming linguist sa dating <laughs> okay oh sakto pala february um the, what i mean ah. is uh sa history ng disiplina namin, nagkaroon ng rise and fall of attempts at exact dating of linguistic divergences. Yes. Kasi hindi katulad ng material culture o ng mga inaaral ninyo sa archaeology na meron tayong iba't ibang dating methods. Yung ano kasi, yung language, hindi siya constant eh. Hindi constant yung yeah. rates of change and rates of vocabulary loss. But I, phylo, phylogeny, yung sinabi ni Mike kanina, yung phylogenetic techniques, uh, that uh, in my reading of the history of the discipline, parang ito na yung attempt muli ng pagbalik dun sa baka naman kaya natin, di ba? Baka naman kaya nating bigyan ng datos yung divergences when porohanon uh, diverged from the other design varieties or ended up uh, where it is now so yeah that's my uh, answer or response to that all right i think i have other questions but i'll let jg go ahead yeah, Thank you. yeah sure okay. yeah we have a question in the chat from uh kate lim and she would like to know if the if the visayas by by script uh, reflect the local languages or structure of it. Oh, uh, I'm I I will have to do more research on scripts because ibang usap usapan yun. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, I might I might be unprepared to make statements regarding <coughs> excuse me regarding surat binisaya. Pero as dun sa cursory readings ko dun sa pagbabasa basa ko parang nakikita ko na surat binisaya ay uh, ginagamit ng mga waray speaking populations noon. So uh, baka makikita natin sa surat pinisaya na walang difference between R and L dun sa isang symbol or baka nagmo-merge sa isang simbolo yung mga sounds na yun. Could Porohanons have also used surat pinisaya um, in the past? Maybe pero ano kasi dun muna ako sa spoken language uh, baka sa ano sa sa ibang pagkakataon ay mak maka branch out ako sa scripts naman at aning involvement ng kamotes dito sa uh, lahat ng ito <laughs> okay, thank you uh, and then I think I had a uh, personal question that I wanted to ask uh, I guess sort of the trend of uh, the use of of uh of the language does it seem to be growing does it seem to be diminishing uh, or does it seem to be stagnant in like if you reflect on past studies today's studies and where the language seems to be going at the moment yeah um these are just from one or two people uh talagang kailangan ko ngang bumalik ulit sa poro Pohon, hopefully diba pero yun nga um, sabi nila, kahit yung mga bata daw, even the children, the younger generations continue to speak. Rohanon, one of my consultants shared to me that even if his children, um, even if his children were born in Cebu, someplace else, nung binalik niya sa Poro, nung binalik niya sa isla, and there, they, they were already based there, natuto naman sila ng Porohanon. So I think the prospects for the language are positive naman. I think it uh, it will still continue to be vigorous and I don't want to uh, ayokong batiin sana but uh, more yeah uh, as we always say further research is needed and uh, a more intensive and a longer uh, a longer uh, period of stay in Poro would reveal more um, of these aspects of it. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. And I also believe uh, Anna had a couple of questions that she wanted to ask. <laughs> Meron ako listahan dito. Okay. So kasama ba it, so yung nag you mentioned yung research ni Miss Cynthia Zayas uh, na yeah. nag she went around looking at the maritime exchanges doon and it was an economic trade kasama yung Camotes Island if I recall correctly tama ba ako Mas Bantayan Bantayan, Mas bantayan. Although right. she referenced it in passing Oo uh -oh. uh -oh. So ibig sabihin nito hindi siya kasama doon sa trade route ng I forgot yung trade na group na yun eh, trading group na Mas yun. ano eh, mas Visayas C yung Sinamam Zayas. Uh, Doon sa uh, mas ano pa, mas malapit sa Panay. Ah, okay, okay. Wala okay. sila yata sa Kamote C. Okay. Kasi na, na interest ako sa konsepto na baka meron ring, there's an exchange. Then, I mean, merong outlier or different uh, exchange happening in that area na maritime group and of course as an art as archaeologists even yeah. though that this is a recent thing or 1970s ang iniisip ko based dun sa kaya ko rin tinanong yung um, yung katagalan is ito rin yung method sa Austronesian uh, sa, sa studies ng Austronesian language and then it, nagsimula sa, lang, sa linguistics and then pinag-aralan na lang yung, nagtapal na lang ng, ng archaeology, which was more around 2,000, uh, 3,500 years ago. Yeah. So, pero in, in an island setting, at ito rin yung pinag-uusapan rin namin, in terms of small island setting, how far can we take it? Pag, mm -hmm. in terms sa uh, economic exchange found in through the archaeological materials, baka yung language can also help or the linguistic studies can also help in tracing, not necessarily kung saan nang galing, but it will give us an idea at least on the movements of people. Okay, so parang pang add-on siya sa understanding natin of the past, uh, past na kung paano naging, how we came to be right now. Parang yun yung iniisip ko sa Purohano na ano. Uh oh it, uh, Sorry. And with that, may isa, so anyway, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, may isa pa akong tanong, sorry. May, De, may ano, katutuwa, uh, na concept. Gusto ko lang mag-respond dyan kasi okay. ano nga, um, tama ka na kung saan, kung ano yung limitasyon namin sa linguistics, dun pumapasok nga yung archaeology. Kasi mm -hmm. yung sinabi ko nga kanina, i, uh, mahirap i-date yung, ano, yung yes. words, yung uh, oh, yeah, rate yeah. of, hindi siya, ano, hindi siya material, eh, hindi siya tangible. Eh. Yes. So ngayon, uh, interesado ako, baka may na-publish na or baka gagawin pa lang. <laughs> uh, baka may makita tayong makakatulong na archaeological findings dun sa, dito sa area na to ng Camote Sea. At baka nga sa iba pang mga areas ng Visayas na makapagturo or ma, ma, mas mapunan yung overall picture kung bakit may isang maliit na... Uh, um, uh, na bahagi ng dagat ng karagatan ng Cebuano na may ibang salita, di ba? Yes. May yes. gusto kong malaman. Uh -oh. Pero Bisaya pa rin siya, di ba? Yun yung, I mean, yeah. sa concept nila, Bisaya pa rin. Yes, uh -oh. yes. Uh -oh. okay. Um, okay, may is ang isang question ko, pasensya na tuwa ako. So, oh, go lang. ilang generation ng identity ang konseptong porohanon at, at naka- akibat ba naka-associate ba ito sa konsepto sa pananalita lang o sa pinanggalingang isla kahit naglumipat na sila at iba yung salita na nila sila pa rin ba ay porohanon yun oo oh, oh. uh, that i haven't uh, gone to that aspect yet kung uh, ilang generations at kung yung sinabi ko nga kanina sa isang slide ko kung gaano katagal at sinong mga pamilya yung um, tinatawag nga nilang lumad na porohanon. Uh, it's do predominantly a linguistic category. Uh, identifier, primary identifier talaga nila ay yung paraan ng pananalita na uh, very marked nga na kapag uh, kaya nilang mag-adjust kapag ang kausap nila ay Cebuano pero 
sinasabi nila na hindi palagi na makakapag-adjust yung Cebuano papunta sa salita nila. So primarily linguistic marker ang pagiging porohanon at baka na uh, baka sumusunod na lamang or karugtong na lang yung yung uh, pagiging galing isla. Yun. Okay. Sige. Thank you. Okay, and now we have a question from Mark Garcia. You could, yeah. Hello, Bench. Thank you. Thank you sa, ano, sa presentation. Oh, salamat. Actually, ang question ko lang, no, um, meron bang, aside from the local languages, yung influences ng local languages dun sa Parohano, may, may natitrace ba kayong uh, influence ng foreign language? For example, Spanish or Arabic, maybe? I don't know, kung, kung meron man. Oo. Uh, sa Spanish, ano, uh, meron nung mga makikita din natin sa Cebuano. Uh, um, dun sa mga makikita din natin sa ibang Philippine languages din. Yung Arabic, hindi ko pa nakikita. Hindi ko pa masyadong nahuhukay sa lexicon ng Porohanon kung mm-hmm. meron ba mga impluensya ng Arabic. Pero ano, maidugtong ko lang sa ibang language groups kasi sa Bicol halimbawa yung mga tinatawag nilang interior Bicol varieties like Rinconada, Miraya, yung mga hindi katulad ng Bicol Naga. Ang perception nila mas marami silang na pe-preserve na Spanish borrowings, mas marami daw influence from Spanish kaysa dun sa mga nasa city centers. So baka mas kapag mas tumagal yung pananaliksik ko dito sa Porohanon, baka ma-reveal na mas marami pa nga siyang influensya sa Espanyol at baka sa Arabic din kumpara sa Cebuano o dun sa mga iba pang lingua franca. Last na question. May, ano yung earliest na linguistic work or study na uh, tungkol dito sa Parohanan? Meron bang mga 19th century siguro during Spanish period or uh, 20th century yung talaga yung pinaka maaga? 20th century na talaga. Mm-hmm. Yun nga yung ano rin eh. Uh, on the lookout pa nga rin ako dyan eh, kung baka nga nabanggit eh. Okay. Yun lang. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Mm. Salamat. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any more questions? I think si Ara Espigar has a question. Okay. Yeah. Ara, go ahead. Um, readers ako sa arts, uh, like for example, sa songwriting. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you. Ano, um, wala pa akong naririnig na uh, compositions in Porohanon uh, or poetry. Pero that's one of the things that I will look out for then. At uh, ipagtatanong ko din pag nakabalik na ako sa isla. Pero yung ano nila, oh, yung yes, kwento, mga kwento, yun mga kwento, sorry. Mga pang, ah. kwentong pambata, mga ganyan, oh, oh. nare-record ba nila yun? Ah yes, uh, buti pala na itanong mo yan. Meron kasi silang, ano, uh, baka pwede rin tong pagmulan ng discussion ng mga kasali dito sa forum na to. Meron silang, uh, yes, folk tale, meron silang legend na meron daw dating dalawang tribo sa quote and quote dalawang tribo ito yung um, phrasing dun sa kwento e dalawang tribo daw sa isla ng Poro na ang pangalan ay Tagmaktang at saka Taganito away daw sila ng away ngayon may isang um, mediator na nakapagbuklod daw dun sa dalawang alleged tribo na yun at yung point of uh, where they the point where they met and the point where they were able to settle on an agreement to defend their island from ito naman yung lagi lumalabas sa folk tales diba? from Moro, quote unquote Moro uh, raiders uh, yung point daw kung saan sila nag-agree ay kung saan nakatayo yung munisipyo ng poro ngayon so yun yung uh, nakuha ko with regard to folk tales and oral history uh, Yeah. Uh, thank you. May follow-up question ako. So, sa origin stories nila, origin stories, 
parang yun na yung pinaka pinanggalingan nila from two tribes pero wala silang kwento kung saan ang galing yung dalawang tribes nila wala na ano, ano lang uh, tumitigil lang dun sa may dalawang from tribo dati thank you mm-hmm. salamat okay and uh, i think uh, eleanor lim has a question so feel free to ask your question uh, hi um uh, may na observe ka ba sa uh, you know sa recent jan sa recent uh, use of the poro language na kung na nagba, nagbago na kung baga um i don't know how to phrase this properly kasi for example um in bicol kasi in uh, i speak uh, western miraya so um napansin ko uh, recently yung mga words nila especially yung alam mo yung sa church na nagbibigay sila <laughs> ng kodigo pag nagmimisa oh. um napansin ko uh, they actually nag, nagiging patagalog na siya right uh, right so, versus yung ano namin kasi in, in fairness naman hindi mo ma-spell yung western miraya <laughs> na language <laughs> seriously so um, may ganun bang nangyayari diyan sa ano diyan sa area na yan in recent times ganun yeah ay salamat sa question mo very interesting uh, parallel case parallel scenario totoo na uh, dun sa um pinaka recent na nasulat ko sa Porohanon um ani pas mas nagiging Cebuano na talaga siya eh. yung uh, sinasabi ng mga uh, consultants ko na Sir Vinci ang original talaga na Porohano na an uh, mm-hmm. parang sa Bicol an an Puza an uh-huh. an Bazi yun talaga sir yung orig pero kapag nagsasalita naman sila kapag uh, nag uh, when i hit the record button Ang nasasabi na nila ay ang ng. So, uh, baka moving toward more Cebuanones yung Porohanon. Um, may pagkakataon din na hindi nila nagagamit yung ara, nagiging naa, yung nabanggit ko kanina na existential marker. Uh, yeah. Ano siya? Uh, parang ganun na rin yung nangyayari. Parang sa Miraya din. Oh. Yeah, we- yeah, would that be similar to like I guess a creolization of a language? A sort of like, you know, combining yeah. different Okay. Right, right. Uh, spot on. Na ano talaga siya? Well, for all we know, Porohanon might have been a creole in at some point in the past. And uh maybe it's uh moving toward a direction of further uh more creolization. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, are there any more questions that people would like to ask? Oh. Sorry, I think si Mark may tanong. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Mark asks, uh, sa Facebook group, may changes din ba sa paggamit nila ng uh, PRH published in Facebook? Uh-huh. Porohanon, yeah. Oo, minsan Cebuano na rin. Minsan Cebuano na rin yung um yung ginagamit nila sa pag-post at ah may isa pa akong uh, anecdote galing dun sa isa kong language consultant na minsan kapag sinusulat daw niya yung porohanon imbis na z yung gamitin niya minsan j daw yung nasusulat niya pero kapag binigkas naman daw niya ay z pa rin so sa pag-type kapag type written ay nagkakaroon din ng pagbabago Okay, thank you. Uh, Usual bayan, sorry. Can, can I? I sorry. Yes, yes, go ahead, Anna. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to that, parang may may switch bayan sa sa utak, I guess, or sa ano sa usual bayan sa mga ba, sa mga pag si may similarities yung language. Uh, oh, oh, uh, usual yan. Na uh, ano nang ay at hindi naman to kakulangan sa native speaker or kumbaga it's not uh, it's not their fault, no? Na parang minsan hindi na nila namamalayan na ay nagsisibuano na pala ako, or sometimes the boundaries between where Cebuano stops and Porohanon starts can be blurry. Within the same sentence, I've observed within the same sentence, there's going to be a switch. 
within the same um, string of utterances, magkakaroon din ng pagbabago sa forms. So it's really uh, mixed nga. Mi- very, uh, mukhang tama yung perception nila eh. Mukhang tama yung perception. Na halo-halo talaga yung salita namin, Sebe. Yun. Okay. Galing. Okay. Uh, oh, sige, baka may iba pang may question. Sorry, JJ. Yeah, if uh, anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand, type it in the chat. Or else I think, P- I think Anna, H- you could, yeah. Sorry. PhD mo ba to? Sorry, yeah. Hindi, uh, masters. Ah, masters. Ah, masters mo to? Okay. Hmm. Ah, okay. Tapos, i- anong stage ka na, if I may ask? Sorry, yeah. Baka, <laughs> okay lang. Question pala to. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman, sakto lang. I've come to terms with it. <laughs> The uh, proposal stage. February, February, yeah. Okay. <laughs> proposal stage na ako sa uh, aking thesis. Okay. All right. And, Sana ma-approve. And then you have to go back pa to, ano, to to get more information. Oh, ba? my. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Kaya talagang bad trip nung, syempre, lahat naman tayo yeah. na apekto nung pandemia. So, okay. seto sa mga na na pilitan ako itigil muna kasi hindi pa ako makakabalik ulit. Siguro may ano lang ako sa archaeological at ikaw lang since nandito ka na. So may mga kweba ba doon sa area na yun? Meron. Meron meron ano? din ako napunta. Pero sorry na limuto ko yung pangalan. Ay, yeah, okay lang. Pero oh. naglilib paano paano yung paglilibing nila? Mm. Yun ang uh, may cementerio ba? Uh, hanapin ko. Paano? Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Okay. Kung ano yung burial practices nila. Okay. Iniisip ko rin kung ano, pag may similarities rin ba sa practices in the nearby islands. And ang isang interesting na makita, is, syempre very formal na to, is yung mga grave stones, yung mga grave markers nila. Ano yung nakasulat? Um, mm-hmm. How is it expressed? Uh, in Bisaya ba? O baka may local method sila and yung mga design markers that yeah. they're also using and that can also be expressive sa kanilang identity din besides sa sa um sa, la- sa language so i guess it's a different kind of language yeah. uh, yun yung pwede and i was speaking with other people <laughs> sa background na interesting siya dahil iniisip ko na there's uh, ang daming lumalabas ngayon na research on well of course Cebu as Cebuano as a language or Bisaya as a language ay very varied uh, but there's a lot of things happening sa metal period that is 2000 years ago uh, doon sa sa Bicol yung kinikwento ni Ellie sa mga areas na yon and in connection with Samar Leyte and even uh, Surigao uh, and of course yung ang may interes ako doon dahil yung jar burials na gusto namin tingnan ay nandun sa area na yun. And may nangyaya, parang tinitingnan namin sa mapa, so far, archaeologically, o baka hindi pa lang namin nahanap, yung jar burial practice na yun, it's only just at the eastern part. Ang, at the pinaka last na nakita namin siya sa western part ay sa medyo top na ng Panay. So mm-hmm. parang may, pero may mga kwento pa rin sa Camotes Island na may mga nahanap ng mga ganong classing jar burials. But other than that, when it comes to the westerns sa Palawan, parang wala na. So, yeah. it's, uh, so kung ganun, ibig sabihin merong maritime small island movement at least na nasa back of the people's minds that con- consistently, that, uh, that, co- that there's, there's a continuity on, yeah. on the, on the, oral probably sa oral history nila or even sa maritime practices nila uh, or that their adaptability in smaller island uh, environments then mas ano na pwede natin makita sa magre-reflect not just sa uh, archaeological and there's also there's also the language part na ano na, hmm. na makikita and ang ganda kasi maganda siyang makita ng ano all around na interact oh my holistic. Oh, holistic talaga. At saka ano, ang ang I, I was mag-jump up lang ako sa sinabi ni Ara kanina na ano na yung arts. 
yung newspaper, the fact na meron silang newsletter is a good, ano eh, good example na meron ding, at least may nananaig na arts. They're writing in that method. So, right. they're practicing, they're, they're committing to script yung language nila. Hmm. Oh, there's a question. Sorry. Okay. Sad. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, I think this is going to be the final question of this talk. Uh, of course, you know, you could reach out to uh, uh, to our speaker today, but uh, we'll end with this. Why is Porohanon uh, only spoken in one munip- municipality out of the four mu- municipalities in Camotes Island? Uh, I'm Porohanon, but this has always uh, baffled me, uh, especially uh, municipality of Tudela, which is in the same island. Oh. Uh, hello po. Uh, gandang hapon. Um, well, it, it baffles me as well. And um, I don't have, we don't have ready answers as of the moment. And I really thank all, uh, all the uh, members of the audience for all of these different dimensions that will enlighten us kung bakit nga ba sa munisipyo nyo lang sinasalita yung porohanon. Well, Wolf says that in, in 1967, ang sinabi ni Wolf, yung ganyang distribution na maliit might be an indication that Porohanon or the Camotes variety might have been spoken in a larger area. And because there are just scattered um, distributions of speakers in the other uh, municipalities, pero baka konting-konti na lang sa ngayon or totally absent na, uh, this might be due to yung napag-usapan nga natin kanina na pervasive influence of Cebuano. Pero ang daming research ngayon sa linguistics na lumalabas nung what is the role of social networks in preserving or in binding communities in order for them to stick to uh, what you call an eso uh, an esoteric speech or in a ay okay nakapala ni Ma'am Joy okay lang po okay lang no problem uh, regards kay Ma'am Joy uh, so yun um yun nga uh use of ang lumalabas sa linguistics research ngayon ay uh, what are the what is the role of fa- familial bonds or of social networks in um, keeping a community tight knit in terms of linguistic patterns and speech patterns. So, baka kailangan nga nating uh, tingnan yung genealogical records at sino mga pamilya, sino mga miyembro ng pamilya yung talagang uh, nagpanatili dun sa munisipyo nung paraan ng pananalita. Yeah. Uh, here's to here's to the next time that I'm able to visit there. Yeah, for sure. We're definitely uh, excited for you and definitely uh, await the, uh, <laughs> the the products of your research. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so once again, let's uh, thank our speaker for uh, this really, really delightful talk. And if I may hand off uh, to my co-host, uh, Anna, for any final announcements. All right. Thank you very much. Sir Vinci Santiago, that was a very good talk, and I'm so sad na he- that you can't give this talk when you're when in physical <laughs> in ASP itself. But we will invite you to just hang out if you're there or uh, if you're if you want to just have coffee and look at the materials, and then we can talk about the possible <laughs> collaborations. Trust you know, talaga in ASP ko yon. Uh, about this this area because it's such a, a very interesting area, interesting idea. You introduce a very good concepts that I think should be continued, and we we th- we wish you good luck. Sa yung masters, we'll be waiting for it, then. Because we're interested in the materials. Um, but this has has this been published, by the way? Uh, not yet. Okay. Okay. Getting there getting there okay uh so for next week we will have pao basilia from griffith university and also from asp who will talk about bone histological examination of insular dwarfism of fossil 
proboscidian remains. That is something that looks like elephants. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, from island Southeast Asia, and also based on uh, island island effect, the small island effect rin yung pag-uusapan, pero on the morphology of bones naman. Okay? So, parang nag, pinag maganda to kasi may theme tayo uh, sa February, islandism and uh, travels that we cannot go to. Chos. Ayan. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. And Vinci, we have your email. So if anyone has uh, any questions, is it okay to contact you? Yeah, All sure, right. sure. All right. Uh, if we we have your email, or if anyone wants to contact Vinci, you can uh, contact him through your the email. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you, uh, JJ, for co-moderating with me. That was amazing, and uh, thank you also to Ara Espigar for. The wonderful again, the wonderful, wonderful poster that I really, <laughs> I really, really like the poster. Parang na feel ko yung pagka postcard talaga niya. So that was a work of art. But also thank you to Vinci who also took the photo, and also gave this wonderful talk. And we hope to see you again next week for the next Binalo Talks.